Scott County Schools has a long-lasting tradition of high student achievement and excellence. Academically, we boast a 92% graduation rate and our students have consistently furthered their education into productive careers. Many graduates have shown success right here in our community as educators, healthcare professionals, successful agriculturalists, businessmen, and board and council members. Our students highlight their talents in the fine arts programs. Each year, the performance in band and vocal, the plays and musical, and in art contests showcase impeccable ability and creativity. The career and tech ed programs give students an opportunity to learn real life regional skills and trades, and students are able to apply them to the agricultural and vocational workforce immediately upon graduation. In competition, our athletic teams have shown great success, bringing home 20 state titles, dozens of league championships, and numerous opportunities for student athletes to attend college on a scholarship. It's no wonder our district is a destination for parents to raise their families in far western Kansas. The school district is proposing an upgrade to district facilities and the amount of $25 million to address size, safety, and efficiency concerns our buildings pose. Our district enrollment has reached the 1,000 student mark, a number we haven't seen since 2002. The last time our enrollment was this high, 120 to 150 of our students were attending classes in shallow water. These current building structures have never held this many students. Also, our buildings fall short in meeting the safety requirements in public schools today. Recent incidents of intruders and school violence, along with the potential for volatile weather, have our attention in keeping our students safe. The elementary was built in 1987 and the middle school in 1960. In these 30 to 57 years, a long lifespan for a school building to go without an upgrade, many changes have occurred in accessibility requirements, safety codes, and instructional practices. We can address these areas in our plans. The three goals of this bomb project are safety, size, and efficiency. In terms of the safety goal, we believe our students should be able to have the safest environment possible with appropriate tornado evacuation locations and safe, secure entry to the building. For this to happen, all students should be able to evacuate quickly and orderly to a tornado safe room while school is in session. Also, our school entry points should direct visitors to the front office where they can check in with school staff before entering the building. The safest tornado plan at the elementary and middle schools do not meet the standard for a quick and safe evacuation location. Evacuation at the elementary takes 10 minutes for students to exit the building, walk across the playground, and reach the basement of the district office. The middle school plan lacks adequate walls and doors to prevent winds from blowing debris. For the size goal, we believe our facilities should have enough space to provide a high quality education to all students. In many cases, teachers have to find open locations in the building to provide instruction or intervention with groups of students. Instruction is happening in the hallways, closets, the lunchroom, and the library. Our students deserve an instructional environment that limits distraction and gives the adequate space to learn. For the efficiency goal, we believe that schools should adhere to the most efficient use of taxpayers' dollars. With aging buildings, we constantly look for cost-effective methods to repair buildings and the units within them. Our annual working budget is strained with this process, and many of the dollars we use to repair aging buildings could be used for student programs and additional staff to keep buildings in good shape. The buildings we currently use are in need of repair and addition. Our most recent upgrade was in a 2002 bond election, and most of the work done at that time was to the high school. The high school has adequate classroom space, upgraded tiles and carpet, and a tornado safe evacuation in their area. So renovations in this bond proposal are limited to creating a safe entry to the school. Currently, the distance between the front door and the office entry put us at risk. We believe it is imperative that visitors check into the office before entering the building during school hours. The upgrade plan at the high school is to attach the front entry to the office. 
allowing us to monitor all entries during the school day. In 1987, the elementary school was built, making this building 30 years old. Plans at the elementary include renovating the existing building and growing space by turning it into a preschool through second grade center. In 2006, kindergarten rooms were created in the old gym on the southeast side of the district office. These plans will bring the kindergarten classes back with the rest of the students and a new entry and office will be added onto the front side of the building, assuring safe entry for visitors during the school day. An addition of a music room with FEMA rated walls, strong enough to serve as a tornado evacuation room, will also be added to the south side of the building. ADA accessible restrooms is also a target for the elementary building, meeting the needs of all students and staff. The middle school building has lasted the longest without a major upgrade. It was built in 1960, making it 57 years old. This site has the largest land area, so the district intends to maximize its use. Plans for the middle school include renovation of the current structure. Much of the floor and ceiling tiles have asbestos adhesive below them, making the renovation more intense. Plans for the middle school include turning the renovated section into a third through fifth grade area adding a 6th and 8th grade wing onto the west end and locating the central office between the two wings to establish one building that has two separate environments. These classroom additions will provide space for instruction and intervention for the number of students we project will be in our attendance for years to come. The front office will provide as a safe entry point much like the elementary and high school along with drop-off zones and parking on each side of the building. Also included in the middle school plan are new vocal and band classrooms, a new gymnasium primarily intended for 6th through 8th grade PE, and a new cafeteria. The gymnasium will also be used for a tornado evacuation area as the locker rooms will be built with tornado safe walls and ceiling. District competitions including volleyball, wrestling, and basketball games and tournaments will be held in this gymnasium as it will offer sufficient seating, ADA accessibility, and parking. There will be a walking track around the perimeter of the gym for community use as well. A six-court tennis court facility will be added to this site to allow our high school tennis teams one central practice and competition location with bleachers and lights. The courts will be available to the community in the evenings and weekends. Finally, the sports complex is our final target. The home bleachers on the west side of the facility were originally erected in 1965 and do not allow for ADA accessibility. In fact, many patrons avoid home games due to the difficulty in climbing the stairs to reach a good seat and the traffic flow around the facility. The concrete bleacher structure is wearing away and the lower seating, sometimes referred to as bunkers, create a drainage issue. Rainwater collects on the track in front of the home bleachers, causing us to replace the track sooner than should be necessary. If you attend home games, you know that the restrooms are small, causing long lines to use them. When you add the lines to the west ticket booth and the concession stand, a congested traffic scenario is unavoidable. The plan to upgrade the sports complex includes demolition of the existing bleachers and replacing them with aluminum seating for up to 1,500 patrons. A new concession stand, restroom, and ticket booth building will also be added north of the bleachers, making our entry points on the north and south sides of the complex. The current tennis courts will be converted into parking as well. Our district is in a situation to achieve these goals and projects with little impact on local taxes. We estimate the maximum effect will be $46 per year on a $100,000 home. In comparison with surrounding and similar communities, overall taxes will have very little change. It is imperative that we keep the condition of our buildings in top shape. Our community has supported this concept for nearly 100 years. The 1921 building will still be used as our central offices, board of education office, and central kitchen. The 1930 high school, most recently renovated in 2002, will still serve grades 9 through 12 and remain a source of pride right here on Main Street. The 1958 high school gymnasium will continue to be used for high school physical education, practices, 
competitions, and performances. The 1960 Middle School will maintain its footprint and receive much needed upgrades. The 1980 Middle School Pod Edition will serve the middle school as a library and intervention rooms. The 1987 Elementary Building will maintain its footprint and receive much needed upgrades. The 2002 High School will gain safer entry to the incredible upgrades it already has. The 2005 Kindergarten Room Edition in the Old District Gymnasium will be converted to district office space and storage, allowing our kindergarten classrooms to be located with the other elementary grades. In 2017, we have the opportunity to realize all of these goals. The safety for all of our students, the size for appropriate education, and the efficiency for school funding. Thank you for your support.